it's Real Estate Wednesday. So we haven't done one in a while because my live on Facebook was kind of just being weird. So these are filmed live, but not live because you're not seeing it live. Yeah. But I guess you're seeing it for the first time. So whatever. But today we figured we would touch on the market because we haven't really talked about the market right. in a while. We talk a lot about lending and lending hacks and home buyer hacks and all kinds of stuff like that. But we haven't really talked about real numbers for a while. And I think people are wondering what's going on in the market today for sure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And every market is a little bit different. So if you're not in, um, you know, Eastern Oklahoma, these numbers might not really apply to you because real estate is, as we know, hyper local. Mm -hmm. But as far as the Greater Tulsa Association of Realtors numbers go, which encompasses basically the Eastern half of the uh, Oklahoma state, this is what we got. So we are seeing closed listings. So this is always based on the same time last year. And these are September's numbers because obviously we're not done with October yet. Right. So in September, closed listings were um, down. They were down. So last year it was 1,348. We're at 1,064 64. right now. Yeah. So it's a 21% decrease from what it was last year. Now, usually holidays are a little bit slower, but obviously last year too, there was a lot of, my hair looks kind of weird. You guys seen that? Looks a little better. <laughs> um, might just need a haircut. It's okay. Might just need a haircut. <laughs> um, so, I'm the hair cutter. <laughs> yeah, mom cuts my hair. Um, so what I'm seeing is, or what we're seeing is, I think it's the higher rates, right? Obviously, people have realized, well, that 1% to 2% higher rate than what it was last year has decreased my buying power, and now I can't really afford the house I want that I fell in love with when I was shopping. And now that I'm approved for less because of the rate, I'm just going to stay where I'm at. Mm, and I think that's, that's contributing to that number. So mm -hmm. uh, pending listings, I don't really care that much about that. Um, but new listings is important to note. We are down not a whole lot. It was 1,516 last year. And this year uh, we, we only made 1,423. So only about a 6% oh. difference. That's nothing drastic, but it is a little bit less. That's good, though. People are still, still listing. Good. People still need to sell their house. And mm -hmm. I will say, uh, kind of brings me into the next point, it is still a good time to list your house. Because if we look at the average sale price compared to this time to last year, it is up 2.38%. So people are still getting more money for their houses, even during the winter times, compared to last year. Right. So right. even though there's less people... Um, listing? List, or not listing, but moving, because obviously sales are down... Listings are still up. People still need to sell their home and there are people buying it. And mm -hmm. so for buyers, a great thing to note is, you know, if we go down the list a little bit, you can see the average days on market has gone up. And what that means is obviously homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer. And honestly, the average days on market, it says is only just right at 30. 30. So 30 is nothing. That's I mean, when normal. we got into real estate, if your house sells in a month, you're golden. You know, mm -hmm. that's usually how long it takes just because it's got to get on the market. You got a season, you're doing marketing. And in those last four years of real estate is just like this bubble of craziness that <laughs> real estate really doesn't happen like that. You don't list your house and it sells in 24 hours. I mean, it's just usually not what happens. It does happen. But in a typical balanced market, if your home is selling in 30 days or less and mm -hmm. you're getting a good price for it, that's normal real estate. Uh, real estate's not a vending machine. You shouldn't be able to put in money, cash out instantly like that, like what we were seeing through the, you know, pandemic. Um, but what I was going to get at is what's good for buyers is because you know sellers they need to sell. If you're if you're listing your house in the winter, it's because you need to move for some reason, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And buyers that are buying in the winter or in the winter, sellers need to know those buyers that are buying when it's rainy and cold and not that nice outside. Uh, they need to move for some specific reason. They're not just tire kickers. So, but on the buyer side, you know, because we're seeing higher days at market, you do have more room to negotiate. You know, the seller wants their home sold, and at Keller, we always look for a win-win. So maybe the seller gets their home sold, and the buyer gets some of their closing costs pay paid, or there's some concessions that are offered there that gets you a better deal as a buyer than what you would have gotten even at the lower rates back you know, through the pandemic, people were paying, even in Oklahoma, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars over the appraised value of houses. They were overpaying 
just to get the house at a mm. two and three percent rate. When in reality, that's not actually the best financial decision for your future. Um, uh, what do you say? Your future investments in real estate. Because if you're going to buy real estate, you're going to live in it for several years. I would say seven is kind of the good number because rates always go up and down. Mm -hmm. Home prices on a national average have always gotten more expensive. That's why the house that you bought in the 1990s is worth two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 more than it was back then. And it's worth that much today because real estate, yes, it may go up and down a little bit. Especially in Oklahoma, though, we don't see these wide swings like you see on the coastal region. So if you're living in Oklahoma, you can bet your real estate purchase will go up in value mm -hmm. consistently. Um, well, not well, steadily and consistently, right, I right. should say. But with the interest rates, those people that paid overpaid for the houses, they may have a 2% rate, but they'll never get that forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 that they spent over the appraised value back because you can't refinance that. You can't renegotiate what you paid for the house. You're stuck, you paid that. But you guys buying houses now, even if you're at a seven or 8%, if the rate drops and you got a great deal on your house at a great price, when the rate drops, you can refinance. And then, you know, I don't think we'll ever be down into two and 3% rate, but if you could refinance to a five or a six, that'd be great. Well, basically, they need to know that it's always good to buy the house. Always. Always good to buy the house. Invest in the real estate. Yeah. You can fix these little issues in the future. Yeah. There's a video that's floating around. Um, I think it's Kevin Hart. He's talking. Um, and he says, I love real estate. Why? Because I know where my money is. People always need shelter. They always need housing. They always need a place to conduct their business. Mm -hmm. So whether that's commercial real estate or a house, either way, people are always going to need some sort of roof over their head to conduct life. So right. that's um, why, yeah. um, that's Ooh. why, <laughs> gotta love technology here. <laughs> uh, that's why it's so important to invest in real estate. I know some people are like, oh, it's not an investment. It's a liability because you have home maintenance and all that stuff. Well, of course you have home maintenance, but really with any asset, there may be some maintenance involved, but with real estate, always going to be around. Mm -hmm. And what I love about it is especially land. If you want to start investing in something, maybe you're not into being a landlord, invest in land. You know, there's plenty of farmers that need to use land to uh, graze their cows on, or you can grow hay on land if you don't want to use it. Oh, um, there's the hunters. That need hunt, hunting. hunting. You could open, mm -hmm. you know, just let people go hunt on your land. You can open up like a lodge, build a little small lodge. People could stay there and go hunt. Oh, so so many things, things you can do with land too, but land is almost, in my opinion, the better investment. We work with Keller Williams and Gary Keller. He's been in real estate, you know, since Jesus was a baby. And buy dirt. he always says buy dirt, <laughs> you know, and that's, it's a good point. You know, they're not making any more of it. So Dirt is always a great investment. So hope uh, this sheds some light on just kind of the market and what we're seeing. Uh, it's still a healthy market. I mean, we're not mm -hmm. seeing drastic mm -hmm. changes. You know, closed listings are down a little bit, but people are still getting more money for their houses and the average days on market is not crazy. Um, they I'm, always, I was, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. No, go ahead. Well, I'm thinking back on that 2%, you know, that's not sustainable for the economy. No. It just can't be. It was, it was there for a purpose to help things moving, get things moving. It but, was artificially low to keep the economy flowing, right. but basically all kind of hit the fan. And yeah, it, it can't continue to go that way because we, we'd all just be broke. <laughs> yeah, the, the... <laughs> treasury and the government and the, I, you know everybody knows the government's broke anyway so it's yeah, not yeah. it's not sustainable right um the other thing i was just going to talk about the month supply of inventory it says um is only 2.4 months so that's meaning if nothing sold then we'd run out of how or if nothing new came on the market we'd run out of houses in two and a half months essentially mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what that tells you is Anything that is about six months or less of inventory is usually considered like a, like a balanced market. If it's getting more than that, obviously it's a buyer's market. Homes aren't moving, but we're not seeing that. I mean, homes are selling pretty quickly mm -hmm, still. Mm -hmm. So very balanced market, whether you're buying or selling, it's a great time purely based on numbers. That's not an opinion. So if I can ever help you or we can ever help you with your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, investing, buying land, 
Um, we'd love to help you with that. And we always love running numbers and you know giving people estimates on what things are worth. If you're curious what your home is worth in today's market, we can, of course, help you with that as well. I will uh, add, though, Zillow does give you an estimation, but Zillow doesn't know true. the details. So Zillow's great for a starting point. But yeah. if you really read their uh, fine print at the bottom, they will tell you they're wrong half the time, <laughs> flat out. They just don't advertise that. <laughs> uh, the problem with Zillow, though, is it's based on an algorithm, right? So they right. don't they don't know. Uh, prime they e prime example was there was three townhouses, three townhouses. One of them burns down. Well, because Zillow never goes to your house, they've never seen it. They're just looking at tax right. records and numbers. No physical well, person. Well, that burnt down one sold for like 50,000 and then Zillow assumed the other two are only worth 50,000 now. Mm -hmm. No, no, the one burnt down, but Zillow doesn't know that because they've never seen it. So that's just something to keep in mind. Real estate's always hyper-local. That's why there's little pockets, even within Tulsa. Like Cherry Street's worth more than South Tulsa and it's, they're both in Tulsa, mm -hmm. even for the same house, even for a smaller house is worth more. <laughs> in like Midtown and Cherry Street than it is in South Tulsa. It's all location based. So yeah. It's good. Anything else? It's good. All right. Well, that's our market update for you. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Uh, go ahead and like and uh, like this video, share it with a friend if you think it might help them uh, with their curious curiosities about the market in Eastern Oklahoma. And we'll see you guys in the next video.